Hi everybody. Hope y'all are enjoying yourselves. It is a beautiful Sunday. <laughs> we are here to go through my entire streetwear collection, which you're going to be noticing a running theme soon enough, but <laughs> we can talk about that later. I just filmed a speed running clip that took me two minutes saying every item over repeatedly uh, back to back. So yeah, this is my second take of this video. Uh, my phone did not have enough storage, so that first footage is gone. That first footage, though, was three hours. So <laughs> we have a lot to cover here. And why don't we just get started, okay? I'm going to start with items that I own individually. So if I only own one item from this artist, they are going to go first. And that will start with Pants Brand, uh, P-A-N-T-Z. I've been following them quite a bit. Um, they're a bit racy, offensive, if you will, with their clothing stuff. So when I saw this cinch up backpack here, I was definitely um, enjoyably surprised. Happily surprised. Since instead of saying, you know, something horrible, um, it says we can't solve the problems, our problems, with the same thinking we used when we created them. Which, I mean, it's just true. So, I like that a lot. Next up is the Insomnia Clothing Company Meatwad Beanie. Um, it's a very well-constructed beanie, always fit in my head very well, and has a nice coarse knitting to it with embroidery on the front. The embroidery meant to resemble the iconic Cartoon Network Adult Swim character Meatwad from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. If you know what show I'm talking about, you're either a stoner or autistic, but I'm the latter, so don't... Don't associate me with drugs. Okay. <laughs> Let me check once to make sure this is recording. Okay, great. Uh, moving on to Father Steve. Uh, this is his denim blue trucker cap with the iconic mouse on front. I actually basically traded for this item. It has a nice mesh with a snapback release here for size adjustment. And yeah, like I said, I traded a bunch of freebies that I got from other orders, which we will soon look at. But um, it's very probably the most comfortable hat in my entire streetwear collection. Ended up being the cheapest, go figure. And it just looks great accompanying, you know, blue jeans and a white t-shirt. Despite it being very urban city aesthetic brand of Father Steve, this would fit in very well in any, you know, Midwestern truck stop or just more country areas where the culture is a bit different than what culture this item was generated by. We also have a fairly interesting piece from Father Steve. Uh, I originally purchased this to fill a hole in my collection. You know, I had t-shirts, I had pants, I had shorts, I had miscellaneous accessories. Yet I didn't have something that most people wear on a daily basis in my collection, which is a watch. And almost as soon as I thought that did Steve announce the time traveler. A plastic watch with... His mouse branding on the front, as well as on, if I can show this here, the battery plate has this mouse engraved on it. It's a simple silicone wristband with a very um, simple digital space, um, sorry, blue space here with a specialty programmed mouse animation. Yeah, and beyond that, it's nothing special. It's just a very durable, very easy to read 
a good daily driver watch, which is what it slowly became. I didn't even wear this for statement purposes. It was just genuinely a good watch and it was comfortable. So I just wore it every day as my daily driver. It comes in a very nice manila box with the Father Steve mouse on top. Since everything over there is by the same artist, I'm gonna move down to the closet here. First item, I uh, own a couple of things from this guy, but the rest are sort of knickknacks. Um, I own two of these from the Unowned Clothing Company. Uh, I mainly just met this guy, uh, Ishmael from, yeah, shout out to Unowned Clothing Company on Instagram, Unowned Clothing Co. I was just wanting to support a guy that I had met and, you know, we really hit it off in the chat. So, and he's also part of our trading and streetwear collecting group on Instagram, if you know who you are. <laughs> and so, yeah, I decided to support his brand by buying a couple of shirts and I think a lanyard from him, a little mini squirt gun. Yeah. I don't think I can show the squirt gun on camera because it looks too much like an actual gun. Um, I don't want this video after recording this long to get taken down by YouTube, but hey. Eh? So that's the Unowned Clothing Co. shirt. I, I own a second one of this as well. But since it's a complete copy, we're going to move on to the one cactus plant flea market item that I own. Um, if you guys, I, even normies really, if even if you were normal, you probably saw the TV and online advertisements for a McDonald's meal that was called the Cactus Plant Flea Market Meal. Yeah, that was these. That was these people. Um, you might recognize the four-eyed smiley face. And this is an original cpfm.xyz puff print t-shirt everything except the smiley faces is puff print here text on the front says i like you you're different which is exactly why i wanted it it's such a positive message that really resonated with me you know i thought um i could wear this to pride events and, and um any rallies or just any communal spaces where i wanted to people to see this and feel like they were a bit more welcome to you know openly talk you know, but that, again, and I got this for a good discount as well, just constantly, <laughs> if anybody knows, the sheer ordeal of constantly checking every single day, checking Grailed, Depop, Mercari, <laughs> uh, Poshmark, eBay, uh, Discord, uh, and Reddit to find the right deals, and it finally paid off when I got this for about half of what everyone else was selling it for. And again, this whole text here is puff print. So it's a very nice aesthetic here and we will see a lot more puff print as we go on. If any of you have heard or got advertising for the Meow Wolf attractions, you got the Omega Mart in Las Vegas. We have, um, the train, the subway station, the interdimensional train station in Colorado. Um, now they have a location in Texas and the first one in Utah. But uh, this is one of the brands that they partnered with. This is Future Fantasy Delight Black Long Sleeve uh, Gambling Tea. I must admit, I'm not really much of an anime person. Uh, I just really like card games and gambling. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I'd have a real problem if I ever frequent, more frequently visited casinos. But you can see here on the sleeves, we have sort of traditional slot machine symbols and seven, diamond, bug. I don't know about mushroom, but okay. Um, same thing on the left sleeve. We have clover, cherry, strawberry, and horseshoe. And then on the front here was sort of a synth wave, but anime still with the uh, girl with little horns here, an eight ball for pool, poker chip, money, 
lucky rabbit's foot and a dolphin while she's holding i believe that is a royal flush in spades if you if any of y'all know poker card formations and we're gonna stick very much on theme here with the first ever meow wolf item i bought which is a future fantasy delight currency exchange shirt we again have the anime girl this time with alien antennas and you know i'm a finance and economics major so as soon as I saw something that was silly and had money on it, I mean, come on, don't judge me. You know this was a good decision. <laughs> um, on the side here, we have a globe, just a, a more basic globe, and then a, a globe with inverted colors and a man with four eyes on the left sleeve. On the right sleeve is just a huge stack of money. Huge stack of bills. <laughs> Yeah, it was a bit silly. Uh, it's a lot of fun, though. You know, this is probably the shirt I got the most people, most strangers approaching me on. You know, either just talking to me about Meow Wolf or asking me for money. Yeah, but that sort of thing happens when you dress up in a way that I like to dress up. There are some very large brands in the streetwear space. Basically after this item here, we're gonna only be talking about individual artists. But this is a larger brand called Obey. And this is the Obey uh, peace sign bun up here. We have a very faded peace sign here. And way at the bottom in the shape of a star is the Obey uh, logo could die sort of cut to fit the star uh on here in a very thick embroidery for that just feels like sewed in string uh is the obey company name <laughs> and yeah i think the shading of the brown buttons versus this sort of dusty denim green i would call it almost like army fatigue green is something that I very much enjoy. I think it's a fantastic you know, color combination here. Oops. And yeah, that is really the main reason I bought it. I do not care about the brand. I don't know anything about it. I just really enjoyed the color scheme of this shirt. And so it was fairly inexpensive, bought it, whatever. Something that definitely caught, caught attention is the Knife Circus five-way split denim jeans. Okay, these are a size 32. They were sold as a size 32 anyway. They feel a bit baggy on me. So probably more 33, 34, which is kind of what you expect here. You know, the, the original artist here sliced uh, five pairs of jeans vertically and then stitched then back together in sort of a shuffled format here. You can see we have a dark blue denim followed by a tan, then traditional blue, then gray, then black. And when I wore this, I, I had to wear a belt. Like, you know, these are not staying up on their own. On the back here, we have also mismatched rear pockets. That is a Levi's tag along with the knife, knife circus tag. Um, K-I... And K N I F E Circus, you know, Knife Circus on Instagram, along with what I don't see very often the black leather Levi Strauss label. So that was also a very nice touch that I liked. And yeah, out of all the pants I own, this got the most people talking since at first you would just be like, oh, a pair of jeans. And then you'd look a little closer, just be like, huh? So. Yeah, it's very interesting. Pockets are entirely re-sewn back in. It has full pockets. Pockets are actually a bit large. Not complaining, but they're larger than what I would have expected. And it's just a really impressive stitch work. Very durable. These are not going to come apart with any vigorous use. It's just an extremely well-built pair of pants that were made originally out of some incredibly well just constructed pairs of pants okay another levi now 
a lot of people um, really fanboy over this artist. Um, they were original. They had a feature in the Modern Museum of Art. And recently, or I think upcoming actually at the recording of this, is going to have a runway show. This is a pair of mock mended Levi jeans from Kentucky Boy Tyler. Uh, this is the only Kentucky Boy Tyler item I own. If I come up closer here, you can see all of these stringy loose ends come out of the colored embroidery here to basically mimic the look of a pair of jeans that got like, you know, ripped on the field and then stitched back together with whatever threading they had. And that's really what all of his pieces are meant to really resemble is the real basically skipping all the steps of actually doing hard work and then buying clothes that look like they've been through hard work, you know? <laughs> and then we have a custom patch on the top right leg here. Dogma with the Love's gas station logo here. Overall, um, probably the most annoying thing is the button fly here. It's a size 32 and it's very comfortable. Feels a bit larger around the legs than what a 32 typically does. Like these are a size 32 and they fit my legs very well. The material was just not hugging my legs at all. And there's no decorations on the back here. Um, all the other pants I own have something on the back, whereas this is pretty plain, which is what you would expect since at the time that these were being made, they were not just being made and then sold at a store, right? Tyler was having his fans ship in their own personal jeans, which he would then give a signature mock men to. And that also means that this is a one of one. You know, this was hand embroidered, well, embroidered with a machine by Tyler, but there is no other pair of mock men's with this colorway and this arrangement. And so it's definitely a cool, cool, a cool way to get a one of one. All right. So that is all of the artists where I only have one or two items of beyond this point, you're going to start noticing a theme because Everything else that I own in this entire collection was made by a single dude, a very well-known person, probably the premier name in New York streetwear. Let's get started. With one of the rarer pieces. These are Ass Pizza Collection 1 2017 Je embroidered jeans. These are Levi gray denim, size 2930 waist. And yeah, no, these are from Ask Pizza's first collection drop. Both of the front faces here are embroidered. And then if we turn that around, you can see the back here is embroidered as well signifying where what year the ass pizza collection one stop pretending fgnf 730. overall like these are really one of the items that truly launched ass pizza's career because the build quality is excellent which is kind of given you know he put his own custom tags on here but these are just thrifted jeans that have been rehashed into a new artist's work, which is also something I really appreciate, you know. Too many things are new, and new items are far more wasteful than reused items. So almost everything I have here is also made out of thrifted materials, which is really just nice. <laughs> uh, if I unbutton this here, you can see that there's also a custom ass pizza button for the fly here uh fly is zipper is standard sewn into the seam of the jeans is the jean size in the 
iconic green on black text that the original collection one was uh, really sporting. Ass Pizza 2017. And then the very large pants tags that have his iconic squiggle along with an indicator here. Ass Pizza 2017 signature collection one with two squiggles and the stop pretending there. Yeah. What, and then the detail goes even further because even on the back here, the black leather tag, I don't know how well this is gonna come out on the camera, but even this is custom. We have the Ass Pizza Squiggle on the left, along with his signature 2017, just like the pants tag, collection one, stop pretending, on a leather tag for the back of the jeans. Now, kind of like the Kentucky Boy Tyler jeans, every single pair that came out of Ass Pizza's collection one was a unique piece, right? And they did that by shuffling the colorways. So if you bought a pair of collection one Ass Pizza jeans, you did not know what colorway you were gonna get. There are, I have seen blue denim with yellow embroidery. I've seen black denim uh, with pink embroidery. I've seen pink Supreme jeans with black embroidery. And I've seen even seen beige pants with black embroidery and white pa denim pants with red embroidery. So keeping that in mind, it would, it is very rare to see the embroidery match the color of the denim here. So to have a black embroidery on top of light black gray jeans was something that really caught my attention when I saw it. And you just don't see this anymore. I mentioned earlier I'm a size 32 waist, so a size 29 slash 30 is not fitting great on me, but I did wear these and they're very sturdy. They're very well built. They're great material and they're just iconic. They're just iconic as the 2017 jeans. Another pair of iconic jeans. <laughs> a bit later on in Austin's career, we're going to see a couple more items in this same variation here. We have the 2021 Ass Pizza Denim Therapy Jeans. Now, these are obviously very colorful. They are very chaotic. They're very messy, but they're very fun. They're very out there. They're very, wow, what am I doing? <laughs> and that's exactly the vibe I was giving off when I was wearing these. <laughs> Go hard. Yeah, so there's a lot to say about these. These are, again, 2021. What they were referred to by Ass Pizza himself is Denim Therapy. We have a custom 2021 tag on the back here and a little Ass Pizza Hardy's star patch peeking out of the back pocket, which was very fun. I liked that when these jeans were dropped. On the front is another star being used as the button fly. It's kind of plasticky. If you ordered the croc gibbets as well from, I think, Little Hazy, you will recognize the build of these. And if I go on the inside, we have a very large As Pizza 2021 tag here. But let's talk about the lore. So, Austin would occasionally, Austin aka As Pizza, would occasionally do these posts where he would say he's at this location. And at that park or wherever, he would have rolled out yards and yards, like 90 yards worth of white denim, blank white denim and on the side would be spray cans. And so his fans would come, they would graffiti, basically spray paint these entire sheets of white denim to resemble a graffiti wall. And then those large pieces of denim were cut up to shape and sewn together into these jeans, as well as other items that we'll see later. And yeah, no, that's what was so interesting to watch. These videos that were going up on Instagram and YouTube 
that we're showing not only Austin recording these videos, but also his fans coming in, recording little shorts, Instagram, TikToks, Reels, whatever, of them just really interacting with the art. And it was something that allowed the fans to contribute, but was ultimately an ass pizza piece. Since not only was this his idea, but it was his direction that decided what piece got cut where, what sewed together. I will say I have a much more decorative back than I do front when it comes to these jeans. Uh, it looks like Little King signed these a few times. I think I also got, nope, not a third one. I got more signatures on the back. It's just very cool. Also, um, not to mention the fact that the pockets themselves are also completely separate pieces, so they don't just flow up here. They interrupt and make it even more eye-catching. One thing I've only seen on these pair, um, compared to everyone else's, is that this patch is made out of styrofoam. Like, I am feeling it right now, and I'm looking at it ever so close. This is styrofoam. This is a thin, plastic-feeling styrofoam that was cut up and embroidered into a star patch. And given that every other pair has been made out of cloth, made out of thrifted material, I have yet to see another star anywhere on any other ass pizza item that is made out of styrofoam so that was fascinating to find out when it arrived at my house i did not buy this directly from ass pizza this was another depop uh second hand buy and i really wanted to make sure i got a nice colorful pair of jeans so i did not go the random route of buying directly from austin himself mm. I'm going to rearrange. We want to talk about another iconic part of the Collection 1 2017 collection. We have to talk about the polos. Now, there were polos released with the Collection 1 that had four squiggles on top and then the word stop pretending across the abdomen. And they're in very big blocky text. If I they're in Premiere. I'll put a picture up. I don't know. Probably not. But what I managed to get was something even rarer than a Collection 1 polo. If you can take a look here, this does not resemble the Collection 1 polos that y'all are familiar with. Because this is an unreleased prototype design for the Collection 1 polos. When I was originally seeing the collection ones on Grailed and Depop, I saw the blocky text and the random embroidered colorways, you know, green on purple, white on blue, black on orange, you know, and I thought, I'm only going to buy one of these if it's a medium and if it's black on white. And sure enough, this popped up and I almost, well, I, I guess I debated it for almost a month before I bought it. And it was so fun to have this arrive. It's more very well made material because it's again made out of thrifted material. Uh, the original logo here is just scratched out in Sharpie. Unlike the polos that were made for collection one, all of the squiggles on top here are different. You know, if you look at the collection one polos that were officially released, every single one of these was the same. They were uniform. Whereas this one, this one is different from this one, which is different from this one, which is different from this one. And I can show that if I get real close up here. And then, again, there's very big blocky text on the abdomen here, whereas this more like resembles um, writing with a Sharpie, which I really appreciate. I thought it added a lot more personal touch. And I can understand why this was not the idea for... This is not what they went with for the actual 2017 polos because a unique squiggle, four unique squizzle, squiggles per polo would take a lot more time than what they did. Switching out, you know, um, stencils for the embroidery machines, that sort of thing, and resetting them would just take a lot more time than if they were just all the same. But um, 
Yeah, and then same goes with the text here. It's a lot more complicated. It's a lot more nuanced. So it varies a lot here because it's supposed to looks a lot like natural handwriting. But it's very silky smooth. It's extremely comfortable. And I like it a lot. It's inoffensive. I could wear this to church. I could wear this to work. I could... <laughs> without really seeming too much. Speaking of inconspicuous, I'm going to check if this is still recording. <laughs> yes. Okay. I'm really paranoid about that. I lost... We lost the last one. Inconspicuous. Sometimes... People get a little, it's not a great vibe that As Pizza's work really emits. It's very hard, it's very triangular, it's very sharp, uh, but it's still in that way very street, very uh, skateboarder level aesthetic that is just cool. <laughs> that's just fire, that's just, oh, that goes hard. You can, I'm such a dork. I'm such a dork, yet I own all this. Oh, geez. And one of the things that I really couldn't wear the church uh, or the office or, yeah, I basically something I could really only wear around the mall here is this, which is a 2018 hand stitched somewhat ass pizza pumpkin face denim jacket so this was hand stitched on you can see the little frayed materials here we got the nose to pumpkin jack-o-lantern eyes and then the big jack-o-lantern the iconic jack-o-lantern mouth with the huge fangs coming out on the left and right sides it's just it's a lot of fun i really enjoy this piece and it's very comfortable being a levi's jacket uh, you can see the handwritten tag here, signature ass pizza, a little squiggle 2018 in his sort of stylized font. Yeah, so the pumpkin face pretty much goes across the abdomen. This is a medium, so it fits me incredibly well. I believe I wore this out a few times, and we'll talk about the other pumpkin jackets that I have here in a second. But these were originally made in 2018, thrifted material. Austin would just accumulate leather, leather, uh, denim jackets, and then have his team and him hands, machines sew so on these pumpkin eyes, mouths, the nose right on the bridge. That is a nice detail. I know that could be a little bit more difficult here, but then again, stretching across here, um, there are other variations of this where it's a very dark blue denim with a white face sewn on. Uh, that was, I've only seen pictures of that. And for a while, I've only seen pictures of this item. Like, these are hard to come by. People really like them and I can understand why. This thing is super comfortable. The color contrast is great with the very stark black against this almost entirely whitewashed blue denim. It's very rustic, yet still gives off that um, very powerful vibe. Very, <laughs> I just like it. I don't know what to tell you. I just like it. But this denim jacket is from 2018. And Austin also released a bandana in 2018. It did not come with this jacket. I had to find it individually. But when I did... I did the exact thing I wanted to do, and I pinned it to the back. So this is the 2018, I have no idea if this is in camera shot or not. Uh -huh. This is the 2018 Ass Pizza Bandana. That would have come free with your orders. Um, I found a couple of these on eBay, but uh, they would go before I could uh, make an eBay account. <laughs> so, and then the people that I found that did own them didn't want to let them go. This is just like a piece that people really liked. And I think people also held on to it because it was given with orders instead of actually paid for, you know, 
but of the people I did talk to who also own one of these bandanas, they say it's like one of their favorite pieces and I can see why. Um, it emblemizes, it really encompasses a lot of the iconography and sort of vibe that Austin was giving off, which is yes, very chaotic, but still uh, very confident, very bold and very rash, if you will. Uh, but it's all around, like, simultaneously it looks like noise, but also cohesive. It looks like it was designed to be noisy, if that makes sense. And it was. And it was. I think Austin really did try to revamp himself from the 2018 collection, since we have a second bandana here that I got for free with a... 730 or Halloween 2022 order. This is the 2022 Ass Pizza Bandana. A uh, bit larger. Screen printed on. We got a bit of Hardy Stars. We got the ja iconic Jack O' Lantern. We got 730. We got the Squiggle 2022. 2022 in a few places here. Uh, basically, this is almost like a catalog, really, of the entire iconography of Ass Pizza here. So it almost includes everything. Like, we have 730, we have the Hardy Stars, we have the Squiggle, we have the Year in his stylized font. This is the first time I've ever seen a photorealistic picture of someone's face printed on an Ass Pizza item. But, hey, whatever. Uh, we have Nothing Matters in his um, sort of handwritten font. We have the Ski Mask symbol, the Balaclava symbol, which is meant to mimic the ski masks that he also made, but I own none of because I didn't want any. Um, and as well as the... I don't know how to describe these little guys here. Uh, these show up on whenever Ask Pizza I signs something or other and really i just think I, it looks like finn from adventure time if y'all can agree with me there we're gonna put that back uh i believe i got this for free with an order oh yes now i remember it was the button-up drops. So the 2022 button-ups that we'll look at in a hot second also included the freebies of this bandana. After the bandanas here, we had the 2018 pumpkin face jacket. And again, Austin was really trying to revamp himself in 2022 to make something that resembled some of his most iconic work within 2018 and 2017, but with new, fresher materials, better funding, better budget, better execution, more help. And the result is this. The 2022 Blue Denim Pumpkin Face Ass Pizza Denim Jacket. Just wow. Just wow. We can already see a massive improvement here. Not only are there very colorways and not just black or white, but the pumpkin face is made out of another denim on top of the very smooth and rich um, colored sort of navy, almost black blue denim here. Again, the nose is sewn right on the button bridge here. We got the two eyes and then the mouth come together when you button this whole thing up, which I'm not going to do. <laughs> so, and it's extremely comfortable. You got a little bit of give here. This is list. Th I did buy this as a large. Uh, I'll show you a medium in a second. And they came along with these custom brass buttons here, which we're just like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Like, especially since they are solid metal here. But given the fact that they're star-shaped, they are not easy to unbutton. Like, oh my goodness. This is probably the least ergonomic shape for a button you could possibly have. 
and just eat you kids, you bruh. But you can obviously see where this came from. You know, Austin was trying to remake probably the one of the most iconic pieces he ever made first, which was a 2018 pumpkin face denim jacket. And then he just did it all over again and completely topped himself with the aesthetic that comes with these 2022 jackets. And you can just see right there, that's how long it takes to unbutton or button just one of these star brass stars here. Son of a... I'm sure someone has figured out a much better way to do it than the way than just brute forcing it like I am. But man, have I not figured it out. Got to get each, like, I got to get the head and then the arm and the legs. Ugh. We look on the inside here, we have custom pocket linings here. So not only is this the lining for this front pocket here, but then it also has a pocket built into itself here in the inside. And then we have a behind the face here, we have another pocket. So that's a total of six pockets on this thing. Same thing goes with the other side. Another bit of thrifted flannel here, it looks like, stitched into it. If you invert here, you can see the sew lines of where uh, the eye, the fangs. Yeah, no, it's just so cool. I love this thing. Giant uh, 2022 sticker here with actual washing instructions for the first time. Like, man, pumpkin patch indigo jacket. Yeah, in a size large. Again, very comfortable. I do really enjoy it. Color tag is just the 2022 in Austin's handwritten stylized font. Not going far away from theme here. I own a third pumpkin face denim jacket. This is the black on white denim jacket. Now this one, when this arrived, I was so happy with it. It's just on top of the brass with the white denim, the loose threading of the black you know, pumpkin face. It is just, same brass stars. It is just, oh my gosh, such a statement. You can just chest puffed out, king of the jungle looking vibe here. Just, hey, what up? Mm. Ugh, look like a mafia boss in this thing. Or just like one of those Yellowstone ranchers here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we also have side pockets here, which actually makes the total pocket count eight. Um, this is a jacket I've actually worn out. I did not get a chance to uh, wear the indigo jacket just yet mainly because I like this white one so much. I originally bought the Indigo one in my 730 order because this was 730 2022. And so, but then I saw Ask Pizza Story and he was wearing it. And I'm just like, that looks sick. So I bought one and yeah, it is sick and it's extremely comfortable, very durable. Um, denim here. I don't believe these are thrifted materials at this time. Let me see what they called it here. Pumpkin patch PFD jacket. Same 2022 tag with wash instructions. All four pockets here. Pocket linings made with thrifted material it looks like. With mismatching on the inside which is very much still in sort of homage to uh, where Austin got his start from, just trying to buy whatever clothes he can to make his art on. And it's really paid off now. We've seen the 730 Printing Company. We've seen the 730 Studios. We've seen 730 Footwear. This man truly started from nothing. Absolute nothing. And accomplished so much now. And is still going. It's 
just amazing to watch. And I think that's how I really first got engaged with Ash Pizza is his YouTube videos. Like he would record himself from 2017 to now starting to live stream and record vlogs again. And it's just such a, it's such a magnetic personality for, in my personal taste, uh, people can see him as, you know, abrasive. Um, but I think that's also just him trying to keep up appearances. And just seeing him go from begging people to let him work in their garages, sleeping in the same studio that he's making the shirts in, and driving across the country to buy a embroidery machine that would fit in the small space that he could rent for his studios here and then being interviewed and getting collaborations with Supreme. And it's just like, it's so fulfilling to see exactly where he started and exactly where he is now. And you can go through the entire timeline, especially since People have saved his Instagram posts. He keeps deleting all his entire Instagram profile every now and again. But we know what's going on. And it's so thrilling to see every new update. And now we have the 50 States Tour. He's actually visiting every state now. Finally get to meet the man. Awesome. Awesome stuff. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. And I'm ranting. Let's make sure this is still recording. Okay. Yes. Going back, this was 2022. We're past the denim jackets. We're actually past most things made of denim here. Probably one of my favorite things to wear out when it comes to style here. Uh, we have the 2021 Puff Print Ass Pizza 730 shirt in white. So we have the entire squiggle here. This is all puff print with a very nice texture here. Puff print just looks different. It just has a different visual texture that I really like. Um, reminds me sort of like asphalt, but then... The shapes that they would print in really mimic the like spray paint, the, um, the forms that would result from the medium of spray painting on a wall and that sort of limitation there. Like we have the 730 on the back here. The red on the inside is screen printed while the outline black is puff print. This 2021 is puff printed with sprinklings of what are again meant to look like graffiti or spray paint. Um, these are all puff print. Like all the little dots you see here are also puff print. It's like reading braille, dragging your finger over this. And it's so satisfying to just, um, I don't wanna say, say that, uh, feel the texture <laughs> of the puff print here. Cause it just, it just, feels good. It, it's same thing with the embroidery. I would fidget with the embroidery on my collection one jeans while I was driving just because it's such a satisfying texture to feel on my hands. And again, we had uh, shuffled colorways here. So um, there was a limited amount of red on white and you did not know what you were going to get when you ordered. Same goes with this guy here. We have white puff print on black with green text. I did not order green text. I had no idea what I was going to get, but I got green on black, just like the iconic uh, tags that are on the Collection One jeans. So I was very happy about that. It even mimics the same shade of green, a bit darker, but still very cool. Uh, the puff print comes out much more on the black. Like you can, it really protrudes out there, lo almost looking like um, pancake batter as it's been freshly dripped onto the frying pan and then cooked a little because it's just like puffed out from 
the shirt ever so slightly. It might be like half a centimeter out or a full centimeter out from the shirt layer. And it has that same very interesting texture while protruding out entirely from the shirt. Um, I think I uploaded my unboxing. No, I didn't. I need to finish editing it. But uh, while I was opening this, I accidentally cut a hole in the black t-shirt, which I was a little disappointed about, but this is a great piece. I love the puff print. I love the texture of the puff print. I love the green text that I just so happened to get randomly. And I wore this to concerts. I wore this to parties. I wore this uh, to the mall, to pretty much anywhere. Because out of like, it doesn't say nothing matters. It doesn't say F life. It doesn't say FGNF. So it's just 730 and ass pizza. Probably my two favorite symbols or icons from ass pizza's iconography and genuinely just a good shirt. Well made with the handwritten, I shouldn't say handwritten, printed custom shirt tag on the inside just to have that extra bit of detail. Yeah, it is fantastic. I absolutely love this shirt. Also very much loved my 2018 Ass Pizza logo long sleeve. This shirt is so comfortable. Long sleeve shirts, I had no idea. I wore a lot of uncomfortable long sleeve shirts. This is not one of them. I'm back onto long sleeve shirts. This one was great. Um, it's written down to be a size large. It fits me very well and I'm a medium. So take that with a grain of salt. Since this is 2018, it's been washed. It's been um, used. And so the fact that the print is still here pretty much intact is very nice. It has a bit of lost ink uh, on the archway between the two eyes of the squiggle. But other than that, it has come out fantastic. And the, real, the reason I accidentally said the last logo was handwritten is because this one actually is. In Sharpie, we have a handwritten tag for this t-shirt with an ass pizza signature, a squiggle, 2018, and size large, all written by the man himself. He has his signature printed on the back with the year. We'll see more of that as we go through other items. But this was like, I wore this to, <laughs> doing this again. I wore this to parties. I wore this to the mall. I wore this to social gatherings. I wore this at home as lounge wear. It was that comfortable. And I'm, it was very affordable out of the items that I have. It's very simple. It's inoffensive. You can wear a sweatshirt over this. You can wear a jacket over it and not lose any of the integrity of the piece. You're not covering up anything. It's very nice. Pretty much all the same compliments go with this next item. I wore this to church. It looks so nice. This is a 2022 Ass Pizza Button Up. Printed faces, screen printed, white faces on a black button up in size large. Uh, the only tag we have here is a custom blue star patch sewn on. Those were again in random colors. And yeah, no, there's not much else to say here. When I was, if I had a fresh cut from the barber shop and I was wearing this, whoo! Oh man, I was looking great. This is dapper. This is sick. You can see the sole lines here on the back for the star logo. Oh man. Yeah, this is just a sick and slick looking thing. It's very bold black. It's smooth. It fits very comfortably. It's more thrifted material. So it's just a thrifted t-shirt with Ass Pizza's logo print on the front. Um, very similar. Um, I can't think right now. It's just a uh, very good symmetry. And I think it's a very appealing design, especially with the contrast here. 
and I was very happy with that. What I'm not happy with is the second button up I ordered. I ordered two. This one, random colorways again, came 2022, printed on very cleanly, not printed on very cleanly, are the faces on the front. Looks like this left one came on clean, but then this right one was just a little bit too far to the, to the center here. A lot of bleed came through. It ran down the button edge here. Um, and it just looks sloppy. It looks bad. There's ink on the armpit. There's ink missing from, I don't know what you want to call that, the antenna, the ear of the right face here. Um, there's just random ink here. And it's just not appealing. I wouldn't wear this anywhere. It looks like I made it. It looks like I made it and I rushed it. Ah, whatever. So it goes. Ah. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. Uh, custom purple star sewn on as a tag. Again, you can see the sew line on the back here. It fits very well. It's a medium. It fits very smoothly. Um, if you want to really start your ass pizza collection on a budget and you're a size medium, DM me and I will probably give this to you because why would I wear it? <laughs> I mentioned how much I really like long sleeve shirts and how ass pizza really turned me on the long sleeve shirts. So that's why I bought this. This was pitched to me as an unreleased uh, test shirt. So they would test equipment on this shirt. And um, there were embroidered long sleeve shirts released with um, the collection one. But due to um, a set of initials embroidered onto the shirt, I refused to buy one. So I was very happy when I saw this which was to me a collection one long sleeve t-shirt with just the ass pizza squiggle in the middle. And uh, that makes sense to me because it said it was a test shirt. So they tested the embroidery machine and they tested the tag sewing machine with the XSL here and the um, tag. But as soon as I posted about it, the community was pretty much telling me it's a fake which is also just as believable. Um, you know, it was very easy when Collection 1 was first dropped and Austin was selling out all the parts that they didn't really use. It was easy to get your hands on a random size tag and a Collection 1 shirt tag. Although this is, would be what go inside the jeans. I'm not even sure if this got sewn onto the embroidered long sleeve shirts. Probably, but... Mm. But this is still an extremely comfortable shirt. And the silver thread embroider is dead center. Like, that's just appealing to me. That's just, like, good placement. It's nice eye line. It's a very comfortable, very thick shirt. This is good in cold weather. Like, it's made to look like there's three shirts in one, but really it's one just thick shirt with multiple cuffs sewn in and multiple collars. It's very comfortable. I like wearing it a lot. I wore it out, wore it to friends places, wore it to social gatherings. I was very happy with it. Uh, it's the only, uh, I think out of that, I only uh, ever accidentally bought one fake, you know? So, I'm very happy with my track record here of buying legitimate pieces from the used market as well as brand new pieces from the man himself. So this is another polo. I never got a chance to wear this. Uh, it came from the same drop as the 2022 denim jackets. This would be uh, 730, July 30th, 2022. And this is the remake of the 2018 screen printed New York polos with now a new puff print 
onto this thrifted polo. On the sleeve here, we have 730 in large font and puff print. Again, protruding pretty far from the material here. The Balaclava Ski Mask logo with 2022 here is all puff print. So again, when I was holding this, I was just like going back and forth on this texture because it's puff print, but it feels different from the t-shirt puff print because it was printed on textured cloth. And that texture from the cloth was mirrored by the puff print ink as it was printed on. So it's a different texture to the puff print. And, even, and the letters protrude out pretty far as well. So it's a quality puff print done here with the same purple star sewn tag. And yeah, even though I never wore this, it got a lot of use, let me tell you that. Because uh, I would just... I just enjoyed the texture so much. And then it's just a great visual texture. Because the puff print is far more bold than screen print. Screen print looks like... It was printed off a computer. It looks the same as a picture that was printed on a sheet of paper off of your computer. But puff print is different. Puff print mimics the texture of the material that you put on it. And so if I can even get this on camera, you can see the texture of the cloth here and it is mirrored on the puff print. So it's cohesive throughout. And then the white comes out and brings out that texture to make it even more visible. So all around, I think this was probably the best use of puff print that Austin ever did, even though I never got a chance to really wear this to any occasion. If we want to talk about Austin, once again, in 2022, revamping himself and using puff print, combination with screen print, we have the 2022 puff print combo puff with screen print T. It is just all over the place, and it is fantastic. It resembles, again, like the graffiti wall that, you know, the denim therapy jeans were made out of but instead all of these things are screen printed or puff printed on the orange of the pumpkin is screen print while every line the eyes the nose um yeah even the outline of the pumpkin uh, is puff print so the mouth is puff print the eyes are puff print the lines are puff print the 730 here is entirely screen print the nothing matters here is screen the 2022 is puff the star is screen random colorways also like not every shirt had green nothing matters yellow 730 and purple and green star here this is technically a one of one considering my colorway here white ass pizza squiggle here and then the ski mask ba balaclava for the side here and this was a wraparound, too. Like, they did not limit themselves to just printing on, you know, the side that was facing up. They turned it. They printed it to come over and around. And the design just doesn't stop. And I think it's very cool that way. Austin said that there were about 20, I think he said there were 20 layers of ink on this. And I believe him. Like... The white had to get printed on top of the yellow. The black had to be printed on top of the orange. And it is just a lot. It's a lot, but it's all balanced in a way. Like, it's not all just on the front here. It's on the back, too. And even then, it has proper spacing. Nothing, it only overlaps when it feels like it should. And so I think it's just a nice design to look at. So Austin was trying to revive a design with this shirt in 2022. And the design he was trying to revive 
was the 2018 Tour T. This is a uh, one that I have in white. I got this off of Mercari. Mercari comes out. Not a lot gets posted on Mercari, but when something does, it gets. It's typically a gem. It's typically a gem that gets posted on Mercari. So, hot tip: check Mercari every day because I got this for lower than fair market rate. So. I was happy to get it. It fits me a little baggy, fits kind of like a large. Uh, original handwritten tag says extra large here. And again, this was the 2018 tee that Austin was screen printing in someone else's garage. You know, just trying to make do with what he had. And then he went around to different Walmart parking lots and just sold it right out of the trunk of his car while filming and posting it on YouTube. Um, a lot more color variety, I think, um, or the colors just stand out more to me on this shirt. Uh, this is really where we first saw Austin come out with the very iconic, just standalone jack-o'-lantern face. We have a lot of the pumpkin in 2018, which we can go over. I know I didn't organize this in any cohesive timeline. I apologize for that. Um... But the fact that it's always just right there on the chest is, again, just a real statement. And it is well-placed, let me tell you. That is the most iconic part of this shirt. Down here, we got a little bit more of a collage. We got the Ass Pizza Hardy Star, uh, Nidens Crosshairs, Nidens Mountain Dew logo, and Nidens uh, Squidward here. I'm saying that, like, when Collection 1 2017 was trying to get around, uh, the man who funded Collection 1 was Nidin. Now, we don't really talk about Nidin too much, but he did also have a direct influence on the 2018 collection before him and Austin just really don't associate anymore. Um... So the rest here is all Austin's influence. I got a pink squibble here some people got black blue whatever uh blue 730 on the side 2018 on the side as well the year uh nothing matters in vertical format instead of horizontal and in much more bold type font instead of more handwritten uh and then here's why uh i wore this shirt with a sweatshirt every time um, I really enjoyed buying this shirt. I really enjoyed wearing it. And it's a fantastic little gem. Especially since you can see on YouTube the process and the passion that Austin was putting into each one. And you know it was handmade by him individually because we again have a handwritten tag that's very washed out. But yeah... It has the F word on the back. I'm not, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna. But in yellow print on white, so thank goodness for that. Um, yeah, it just has F life on the back. It had F life on every single one of those shirts. And I think Austin, you know, He's mentioned in interviews why he had Nothing Matters, F Life, and he talks about how he was really holding himself back with perfectionism, which is where the Nothing Matters comes from. He's trying to reinforce that idea so he can really move forward with projects instead of just <laughs> constantly going in the loop of anxieties that come with perfectionism. And in the F Life, I think Austin's past that now. Uh, there's more posts coming out of him smiling, which I always enjoy seeing. I constantly get worried that, you know, he's just losing it. But then he just comes out with something that, you know, makes me happy for him. And I'm very happy for him now and his success. But yeah, no, I could never wear an open back with this t-shirt because I cannot wear this uncovered because of that.
but it doesn't really matter because the most iconic stuff was all on the sides and front anyway. Yeah. I always enjoyed seeing pictures of other people's as well because not only was the were the colors randomized, but so was placement. So the pumpkin face was always on the front, but you had no guarantee of where anything else was going. It still was balanced, which I think Austin has a real eye for. I think he has a real eye. Goodness gracious, I'm talking so much that my jaw is getting sore. Uh, he has a real eye for making messy but balanced designs. And so you can look at something and just notice more things about it and simultaneously have a lot going on with it and yet have it give off just one vibe. And that is what really makes it cohesive and nice. Uh, one of the symbols of Austin's success is really how all of his friends became successful as well. Uh, the real reason I know about Father Steve is because he was friends with Austin for, gosh, I don't know, their whole lives, basically. And Steve does collabs with Ass Pizza. And another friend that I suppose is a little bit more in the shadows uh, compared to Steve, um, but recently did a collab with Ass Pizza, is Warren Lotus. Warren Lotus being very well known for his highly stylized um, Grim Reaper t-shirts, his highly stylized Western t-shirts. Um, and again, we have the nice stylization here. This is the only short sleeve button up that has any association with Ass Pizza. We have the classic Ass Pizza um, large fanged pumpkin on the sleeves of both ends here. Uh, this is very much a sort of safari beige button up. Uh, I'd say not crocodile Dundee. Anyway. Uh, reminds me a lot of the Crocodile Hunter, but otherwise has a much more Grimace aesthetic. Like I said, Warren Lotus was very known for his Grim Reapers. And so the same theme went with here with a bloody 730 knife. If I come up there, you can see the 730 there in blood. is. This is all screen printed here with the WL on the knife handle. Um... So that is sort of an incorporation with the two brands into one logo, which was cool. We got the Warren Lotus tag on the top here. And then if we go to the back, we again had random colorways. You had no idea what colorway you were going to get when you ordered these items. But I got pink. All right. So on the back here, we have a Warren Lotus to the max. Um image and says here in text a deadly night the same text is on the knife 730 warren lotus convenience store logo over there no idea what that's about other than being the warren lotus signature um this whole thing is very interesting because it's not just like ass pizza printing his stuff on and then warren lotus printing his stuff on this was a mishmash design. Like this is an, a person wearing an ass pizza ski mask, a ass pizza styled balaclava ski mask drawn in Warren Lotus's style here. I think the bright pink really goes with the green here. And that really makes it stand out, especially if you only know one of the artists. And you see someone wearing this, you'd be like, oh my gosh, is that a Warren Lotus? Yes. And <laughs> it's also the man, the myth, the legend. Second Warren Lotus item here. We have the same 730 bloody knife, same tag, 730 bloody knife uh, in a horizontal orientation this time. Um, I never wore this. I probably should have worn that this instead of the 
uh, bloody knife butted up the, <laughs> to the bar, but I did. Anyway, yeah, this is the Warren Lotus t-shirt. Colorways were randomized again. And here we have in yellow, the iconic uh, flame cloaked Grim Reaper from Warren Lotus with a very different ass pizza pumpkin. Now I know this resembles the uh, pumpkin we just saw on the 2022 puff print tee, but this was new. This pumpkin was not seen before. You can look back at the 2018 pumpkins, which we'll show in a second, the pumpkin rugs that I don't own, but were iconic as well. And this is far more simple. This pumpkin, I'm seriously wondering if Warren Lotus drew this pumpkin and then Austin just stuck with it, or if Austin actually drew this pumpkin, because it's very different. It's just a simple oval with what looks like Sharpie lines drawn randomly, and then the same pumpkin face printed on top. I mean, it looks like the kind of pumpkin that you inflate in your front yard for Halloween, you know. And perhaps another item I don't own are the 2018 airbrush pumpkin jeans, which were very iconic in them of themselves. You know, the pictures would go viral. And perhaps this is an homage to that because, you know, you can't go highly stylized in detail with an airbrush medium. So perhaps this pumpkin here and the pumpkin here is meant to more resemble the airbrush painted on pumpkins that you would see on As Pizza's 2018 uh, one of one jeans. But after, with these two next t-shirts setting the expectation, I was very disappointed in the pumpkin that came with my Warren Lotus shirt. And these are the 2018 Nothing Matters Pumpkin Tees released by Ass Pizza. Um, so yeah, you can see here, this is a much more detailed pumpkin with curves, very um, definitive lines to add to the same curves that are around the edge here and the same highly stylized pumpkin face printed on with a bit of roughness to the texture to really make it look like it was resembling the spray paint and yeah these are the same 2019 excuse me 2019 t-shirts they both have um the 2019 year with the Cigna drawn on the back uh, one, I originally bought this one by itself. It had green text, um, and it had a crooked pumpkin, which I had not seen before. And it actually got my attention because every single other one that I had found was more like this one, pumpkin perfectly oriented, aligned with the letters. This one, not so much. And it just kind of changed the image for me. And so I bought this individually at first and then this one came with a bundle later on i'm going to show you some items that came with this t-shirt but i did not buy this t-shirt for the t-shirt i bought it for the other items that were included in the bundle um and so i now own two of these <laughs> which is fine this was probably the my favorite thing that I wore out. I wore this to baseball games. I wore this to food truck festivals and social outings. And it was just a good time. This one is uh, a little bit special. Uh, just for me, though. Because it's the first thing I ever bought from Ass Pizza himself. And really what started off my collecting habit. <laughs> so, along with the uh, independent printing, along with the art that Austin was making himself, he was starting companies. And one company that he launched on his birthday 
2021 was a music producing studio. Now it hasn't really picked up much steam since, but he celebrated the opening of that new business with the 730 Studios t-shirt. We have the name of the business here in logo orientation that you would see on other t-shirts endorsing a brand. Uh, you can see it's very much meant to again resemble a spray paint stencil with the block around with the rectangle around the letters here and then there's even a little bit of ink bleed on the stencil but that's fine uh, once again the iconic pumpkin face is printed on either sleeve these have maintained their condition very well as i have worn this shirt out to concerts and social gatherings of course and I got a lot of wear out of it before I bought, ever bought my next item. Uh, that could be visible a little bit more here. Uh, the word enter is very much faded from multiple washes. Enter at your own risk, 730 Studios. Very photorealistic door screen printed on. And then, yeah, enter at your own risk. That branding never really stuck. 730 Studios is just kind of 730 Studios. And I'm pretty sure they're only producing like Little Hazy as a rapper right now. And Room was kind of good. But everything else, I don't know. I don't know about 730 Studios. I think he's far more focused on 730 printing at the moment, which we all appreciate. As well as the other company we'll get into. Oh, okay. So we have the 2022 button ups. We have the Warren Lotus button up. But we have two here that are much rarer, one of ones, and from a much earlier time. We have 2017, 2016 spray painted white button up t shirts spray painted by the man himself. So we can see his little signature, 2016, right under the collar. We got a squiggle here, squiggle down there, squiggle down here, and of course a spray painted iconic pumpkin. Um, looking more at this, you can see where the improvements in the pumpkin shape came with the 2019 print, but you can also kind of see where I'm getting at with the uh, homage theory of why the uh, newer pumpkin looks the way it does. If we turn to the back here, we can see in Sharpie uh, another signature with a Cigna here. 2016, number 5 out of 30. Only 30 of these spray-painted white button-ups exist. And I own two of them. Here is another 2016 Ass Pizza spray painted white button up tee. <laughs> we got another Cigna here, another squiggle there. Uh, 730 in that same sort of bold text that results from the airbrush tool spray paint. I can't tell. I don't know if this was a spray can or an airbrush tool. And then Rip Seeing on the side there. I'm not exactly sure what that's about. I'm pretty sure CN's alive. I mean, CN Moore, the photographer, I'm pretty sure that's what who he's referencing in there. And CN Moore's alive. He's thriving. But yeah, um, this is number 13 out of 30, 2016. The pumpkin one was number five. And we again talk about Nidin here, who funded the 2017 and 2018 collection, I think. Um, and there is an entire Instagram profile of Nidens where if you scroll back far enough, you can see a lot of a limited ass pizza stuff, including him wearing this exact button up. So this is a real piece of history here worn by Nidin and spray painted by the man himself. Uh, let me go for more historical pieces before I get to the more 
last bit of the more modern stuff. Uh, this is a shirt that I mostly bought to fill in. Um, this is a 2018 large print on a red t-shirt. Uh, I really appreciated having a red shirt in my ass pizza collection since when i was originally collecting i thought this was going to be my entire wardrobe of ass pizza so more colors the merrier you can see the signature survived very well but not the front print it's almost in tatters really uh the seam between the sleeve and the main body of the shirt here is where a lot of ink has fallen off over time but I'm pretty sure this got tumble washed a lot and you know there's misplaced ink here this is the condition it came in i did not do this okay this is the condition it came in and i don't think there's any much more to say about that i never wore it going back to the theme of spray painting i bought this uh, shout out to District 7 in Arcata, California, who sold me another thing that I thought I would need if my entire wardrobe was going to become ass pizza. A windbreaker jacket spray painted by the man himself. This is, a again, a thrifted shirt that was spray painted. Ass pizza on the back. A squiggle on the back. A squiggle on the front and that's really all you have to say about it it's a thrifted windbreaker jacket an adult medium fits very comfortable does exactly what it needs to and is very much just like if you are starting a museum of streetwear and ass pizza specifically this is in the museum okay this is in here as an early painted piece on an unconventional item i know district seven was also selling a pablo uh ass pizza rain jacket which i think would go in the same category as this guy but i didn't purchase that purchased something else that we'll see okay we got a bit more of the modern stuff in here uh i mentioned ass pizza Really like to start companies. Um, he has a 730 Studios. We have 730 Printing. We also have 730 Footwear. Austin came out with his own shoes. And actually, let me start with them. These are the first uh, run of 730 Footwear shoes to come off of the factory line. The first ever colorway that was released of the 730 Baller Pros, numbered individually, I have pair number 566 of 730 pairs that were made. These are the 730 Baller Pros. Every detail comes into play with these. I did not know these were going to drop online. And so I had to pay a man in New York City to go to the live pop-up to buy these and then mail them to me in an even larger box. Mm. So yeah, this is a high gloss on matte cardboard box here. We have the iconic ass pizza face, a uh, pumpkin face here, eye, nose, eye, mouth. The fangs of the mouth go alongside the side of the box with a 730 glossed over here which is very cool uh, another fang on the side and then a clock on the top corner for pointing at 7 30 7 o'clock and the uh, minute hand being at 30 if we take out the sh the box itself the Stuffing on the inside. Let's start with the packaging. Let's start with the packaging. Because the paper, packing paper on the inside of this, is custom to the 730 brand here. Oh, this is going to be very hard to see 
on camera, but it very much resembles the 2022 bandana and 2018 bandana that I showed earlier. And just that attention to detail in the packaging alone is greatly appreciated by myself as well as anybody else who ordered one of these. Um, spare shoelaces came with them. And these are size 11s. They are black suede with sort of leatherette sewn on for the accents. Again, there were only 730 pairs of this colorway made. There were only 730 pairs of the black and white colorway ever made, and then they stopped. After that, it then became white on white, and then we have a Timberland beige uh, color orientation. They're gonna keep coming out with more color orientations for people to collect, but there are many like it, but this one is mine. <laughs> if I just look at one shoe here, you can see the 730 logo all the way up here and then inverted to go back down the shoe. Uh, pressed into the sole here is another clock pointed at 730. Is this still recording? Okay. And then on the back, probably the most iconic part of the shoes is the iconic pumpkin again, sewn in to fit the form of the vertical narrow edge of the heel of the shoe uh, with the elongated fangs. So every time you're walking around, that'd be what people notice. <laughs> And yeah, it's a very thick soled shoe. We have the 730 footwear logo embroidered on the front. And then a 730 footwear with clock. Let me see if I can get that. Uh, inside there, size 11. What was very fun about the shoes though, are the custom bottoms, the custom soles, because and this is very fun when you're stamping around in Minnesota snow. If you put the bo two bottoms together, it makes a jack-o'-lantern. Ah, ah, look at that. Oh, yeah, obviously there's a different texture here. The, rind, the lines up meant to resemble the ridges of the pumpkin. And then the negative space of the black is taken up by these very spiky bits. We have two noses for the pumpkin, which is interesting, but I'm sure that was just a compromise in the manufacturing to get a cohesive shape. But we got a left eye and a right eye per shoe here. Uh, you can more see like the half that's here and then the half that's there. And so I remember jumping into a bunch of snow and then snapping the picture of the two together, which was a lot of fun. And overall, the details of this, as well as how well they fit, really does make them a very nice purchase. They were spendy. Um, yeah. Especially since I also had to pay a fee to the person who got me these in person in New York. And then mailed them to me. So, I don't wear them out too often. I've worn them. You can see the little rocks and pellets and things. It's still very cool. I still enjoyed it. Let me put this back in. Package nicely back in the box. You're not supposed to separate two boxes completely, but they do slide nice back inside. And so those are the 730 Baller Pros that originally came out with 730 footwear, along with 730 footwear custom socks. As you can see, we have the 730 footwear on the top stem here. The cardboard packaging includes the iconic pumpkin face. Um, if I open up the black socks here, you can see what happens because the sole or the foot of the sock is also 
<laughs> this is crazy. Uh, pumpkin face. So, yeah. If you knew you were going somewhere where the person required you to take off your shoes before walking into the house, these were the socks to wear, okay? These were your statement pieces. Statement piece socks, of all things. Once again, filling another part of the wardrobe, the hypothetical wardrobe that I was going to make. So I was very happy about that. But otherwise, I pretty much have kept them in the packaging. Bullocks, come on. And that same, and that same pumpkin face is also on the white pair. So same pumpkin face on the white socks foot. Resuming, so that was all to explain these two t-shirts. I mean, Austin can't do anything without dropping his shirt, at least. So, of course, there are 730 footwear t-shirts. Uh, they're pretty much just similar here. Uh, the 730 on the black shirt does not appear to be filled in with ink, whereas the 730 um, on the white is very much filled in with printwear. Uh, it's a very handwritten logo. I do enjoy how, whoops, it sort of got limited and just adds to the human feel of this whole thing, of this shirt, because of the way that the logo just kind of went like, oh, we ran out of room. Yeah, let's stretch it downward. Uh, going to the sides. Um... Uh, if you can recall, the pumpkin sleeves of both the War Lotus and the 730 Studios shirt had the whole pumpkin face printed onto the sleeve, whereas the 730 footwear uh, shirts had the face cut off at the same spot where it's cut off on the shoes to more mimic the pumpkin face that is on their shoes instead of the actual ass pizza thing. Because even though this resembles a lot of the same iconography that is in the uh, ass pizza repertoire, it's meant to be its own thing within the 730 footwear company. So here on both the black and the white shirt is a photorealistic print of the shoes coming out of the iconic box. Yeah, uh, again, it's just one long screen print here. It feels like screen print, it can't be screen print. It's gotta be some machine print form. Uh, still, it's still an ass pizza piece, so we gotta screen printed, yet hand drawn ass pizza squiggle as the tag. And the same goes for the black t-shirt where it is much more pronounced. Bought the black one because I liked it. Bought the white one because I realized there was a white one. We're really starting to get into the stuff that I never really wore. Speaking of which... After how much I ranted about long sleeves, you think I would wear this more. Uh, this is a Nothing Matters long sleeve with a balaclava ski mask icon on the front. Screen printed tag logo on the back here on the tag. Again, I never really wore this, so it stayed in pretty much mint condition. Puff print on the sleeves here is meant to, come on. So matters on the left sleeve and nothing on the right, along with the Balaclava logo in the middle. Now, it's the, what I really liked is, despite 
again, having these colorways for Diwali Plaza be entirely random, I managed to get one that matched the purple and green of my random Hardy star from the 2022 puff print coverall tee. And I only really noticed that when examining my entire collection. So that's definitely fun to have a somewhat matching items here. Uh, again, talking about puff print, we can talk about the one puff print Father Steve uh, and Ass Pizza collab tee. Uh, there's nothing on the back here. It's a screen printed logo on the inside. This was again never worn, so it's kind of still in mint condition, really. Uh, everything here besides the blood and the orange of the pumpkin is puff print. You can see here Father Steve's mouse holding a bloody knife as it carves the face of the ass pizza pumpkin here. Uh, the, pr the protrusion of the puff print on this one, as the lines get thinner with the Father Steve mouse, uh, don't get as far out. But when we talk about the pumpkin here with the stem really protruding out of the fabric, the eyes really coming out, the mouth is really coming out. But there is also a flaw in making such a large object as the mouth is puff print in that it just cracks. It just immediately cracks. You can see all of it here. That crack is even so large, it's showing the material underneath. Like, and that was not because of tumble washing. That was not because of any wear and tear. That was just because of how puff print is. And so I think that was a really good experiment, but really shouldn't be done again so um, thick wise. I think they learned that with the pumpkin on the cover OT, since the puff print is much closer, yet still protruding out. I was a little miffed when this originally dropped, since it was Halloween 2022, and I had just ordered a couple of t-shirts, only to then go to bed, wake up, and learn that this dropped at midnight. Midnight, Halloween, for 10 minutes, you could buy this shirt. And the shirts that did not sell were made in the pillows that are now also incredibly rare. <laughs> and so, yeah, uh, I bought this from someone who is just like me, not really wearing the stuff, more like trying to archive the art, really. And so this never got worn to anywhere for the same reason I really shouldn't have worn that Warren Lotus button up, you know, blood printed right onto the design there. Still recording, cool. We, I have a couple of shirts over here and I want to talk about them as well as the next two shirts in the closet. We have, I think you've noticed a couple of the Hardy stars that have been on the item so far and Despite Hardy's not really complaining at all, I mean, Austin did incorporate, since 2018, has incorporated the Hardy star into a lot of his designs. And I think he was trying to make it into the ass pizza star, which, go figure, whatever, have fun with it, sure. Uh, I was worried at first that ass pizza stuff was really going to start looking like Hardy's merch. But, um, yeah, I'm... I uh, kind of got one over with especially this t-shirt here. Uh, again, I had to have a in-person uh, mystery shopper come in and buy this for me at the New York Soho Art Show. And this is the Ass Pizza Hardy Star printed on brown with pink and purple camo. We have a screen printed tag on the inside as well. This is supposed to be a small. This fits me incredibly well. Uh, 2022 uh, screen printed on the back. Um, but yeah, no, this is another shirt I wore in a lot of places. Uh, no one ever made a comment about the Hardy stars on it. And it's just a very comfortable, well-built shirt. 
It was simple and I felt confident and good while wearing it, which is why I bought another one with the excuse that I was going to wear this on the 4th of July. For obvious reasons. We have the America Flag Star. Printed on the front here and on a screen printed tag. This never got worn since it has yet to be the 4th of July um, for me to use this. It was all around a good time with this. Very happy with what I got. Yeah. Fits me very well. Just haven't worn it yet. I know a lot of people were a fan of the American Flag Star. Both of those shirts kind of premiered at the Soho Art Show. Austin was finally able to premiere canvas art on top of the clothing that he printed. And he came out with embroidered stars. Stars that were embroidered across the entire canvas. And so these went along with that. And it was definitely a lot of fun to watch as he filmed it on YouTube and Instagram. Okay. Going along with the Hardy Stars. If you made an order on July 30th of 2022, 7.30, you would get a free star shirt with your order. So with that denim jacket, with that puff print polo, I got free star shirts made printed on thrifted tees. So here we have, again, random color variation. We have a red and blue star here on top of and shirt advertising O'Hara's Downtown Bar and Grill in Jersey City, New Jersey. Uh, we had the same 2022 printed on the back here. And this was a lot of fun. Um, I was especially happy to get this. Um, where did I go? Because a lot of these pumpkin tees were also printed on shirts that already had logos and i thought that was so cool to see like austin's design on top of university of michigan or whatever shirt it was that he printed on top of and then i finally managed to get something very similar to that with my free star shirt so i thought that was very fun it's very obviously thrifted which i again appreciated when it comes to the clothing that i purchased but it also became a little obvious when I first opened this 730 free t-shirt. <laughs> I thought at best this was going to be a pajama t-shirt. Uh, 2022. You're not a front there. Jeez, I accidentally skipped one. Sorry, I almost accidentally skipped a shirt. Um, but this free t-shirt came with moth holes in the armpits uh or i probably ripped armpits uh chewed up looking collar it was not good i mean maybe if i had worn a jacket on top of it but what jacket goes with orange yellow and blue yeah no this stayed in the dresser <laughs> never to see the light of day My other orange shirt, I told myself I was not going to order. <laughs> but I mean, you've seen all the pumpkin iconography, right? And so also, what I had also told myself is that if he ever dropped an orange pumpkin shirt, I would buy that. <laughs> so here we have New York City 2022. Austin had gotten commissioned to be the artist for the official New York Village uh, Halloween parade. And so I was like, why would I buy a t-shirt? Sure, it was made by an artist I like, but why would I buy a t-shirt for an event that I've never been to? 
And then it ended up being an orange pumpkin shirt. So yeah, there it is. 49th annual Village Halloween Parade in the same uh, ass pizza style font that we saw from the Nothing Matters shirt. Uh, Village written in the same handwriting font. 49th annual in the same handwriting font. Um, this is all screen print. It's fairly thick on. Um, yeah, never wore it. Uh, I genuinely told myself I was going to be a pumpkin for Halloween. I would have worn this underneath my pumpkin denim jacket from 2018. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then a pumpkin hat or, yeah. That was just one of the excuses I got myself to believe in order to buy all this stuff. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, this is still cool. I'm still... <laughs> I have happy memories of scavenging for this stuff, of checking, dedicated checking, Grailed, Depop, Mercari, eBay, Discord, Reddit, Poshmark, just every day checking these. And then occasionally it would pay off with an iconic piece like the 2018 denim jacket or a prototype collection one polo. But in some cases, just knowing people would get you great items. Which is why I saved this one for last. I wore this a lot of places. <laughs> and it is probably, oh gosh, I keep saying that one piece is probably the most iconic piece. Well, like between the 2018 tour tee and the 2018 hoodie sweatshirt. I'm like, oh man. It's an extremely comfortable hoodie, pullover hoodie. I remember really liking wearing pullover hoodies as a kid. And so this really screamed to me as something that I bought. Um, yeah. Got this from a buddy in our 7.30 Instagram chat. Uh, so it just really uh, sometimes comes down to who you know. You know? Uh, like I said before, things were randomly collaged. So not only were there random color orientations of every item on the shirt, every icon, but there's random arrangements. So if you look at the back here, the uh, Hardy Stars, the Squidward, Mountain Dew logo, uh, the ass pizza squiggle all in random places compared to everyone else's as well. My crosshairs is on the hip. I've seen some people who got crosshairs on the hood and I'm just like, that's awesome. Uh, but I'm very happy with what I've had here. If you know, you know, the mall of America is in Minnesota. So I walked around the mall of America in this quite a bit. Uh, we have Nothing Matters on the sleeves, which I do believe the, oops, that's not it. The Nothing Matters puff print long sleeve was trying to pay homage to with its Nothing Matters sleeves. But I just think the color choice was practically perfect for this. Feels random, but then the shades are all the same. This blue is the same darkness as this purple, this, this red, any other darker colors, and then the lighter colors of like yellow, orange, and pink all went together. And so there was a lot of thought put into this without looking like there was a lot of thought put into it. And so I was very proud. <laughs> I was very proud to wear this around. Mm. but it hangs here in the closet most times especially as the weather gets warmer <clears throat> and I fear getting food on these more and more another hole I had in my 
wardrobe <laughs> were uh, shorts. I had pants. I had jeans, but I didn't have very comfortable pants, and I didn't have shorts, which is where these ass pizza sweatpants shorts came in. 2022 with the single pocket on the back. Uh, we have a white sweatpants short with the two ski mask balaclava logos on the front. This was again bought at the Soho Art Show by my proxy in New York City. So it came in along with the brown star shirt. Should have brought some water up here. And yeah, um, these are very comfortable. I have nothing much else to say about them. The print is very clean. It's multiple layers of ink, white, black on white, white on black. Very cool, very fun. So of course we had to get the black version too. These came in with my 7th, 3rd, July 30th, 7.30, 2022 order. You can notice where things went a little wrong. I think this is supposed to be a white ski mask with black on top, and it instead became a black on black. But the misprint just makes it even more rare, so fine by me. Now uh, you can see a correct ski mask here, white on black, on just a black pair of sweatpants. The material's a bit thinner on these, which I just noticed. These are far thicker. These are sweatpants shorts. And then these were definitely more um, pajama pants feeling, which is what I wore them for. I, I slept in these. And the thinness of the material really goes more towards that use than any, I don't know what you use sweatpants shorts for, but definitely not, I wouldn't even call those sweatpants shorts, really. They're too thin for it. I wonder if you can see me all. I'm just going to continue until I'm out of shirts. So this is a bit different. This is a piece within the Ass Pizza history, but not made by Ass Pizza. If we go all the way back to the start, the same guy behind Pants Brand, uh, or one of the guys I think, was also behind the group that made uh, this item here. This item right here. And I keep it in the envelope because every time it comes out of the envelope, I'm worried it's going to fall apart, and so it's very delicate. So it's about 2018, 2019, and Austin's not really shipping. Austin's taking forever to ship, which is what you kind of get. Like, people are complaining about the wait times, but it's just one dude. Or maybe four dudes making thousands of t-shirts that were ordered by people across the world. Like, wait six months, okay? The time you wait is also part of the price. But a small group of men got so mad about Austin's shipping times that they made a group called the Bootleg Boys. And they started making fake ass pizza merchandise, which at first really resembled some of the stuff Austin made. And then didn't. Which is why we have... A Supreme t-shirt with the Ass Pizza logo placed onto it in rhinestones. These are all individually placed rhinestones in the shape of the Ass Pizza Sigma. Oh gosh, there's one falling off right there. Okay. Yeah, so you can see my issue with taking this out or even wearing it. There's one picture of me wearing this. And then I put it right back in the box because you can see how easily these things come off. Yep, it's an official Supreme tea with the Supreme uh, fake cheese pack. <laughs> I'm printing on the front. But yeah, no, this is just a rhinestone pattern that they got, I guess, printed onto these t-shirts and sold them as fake ass pizza, intentionally fake ass pizza 
merchandise for the purpose of getting Austin's attention. They also printed these same rhinestone patterns on sweatshirts and pants on the crotch section of the pants, which I don't own, but would definitely be very interesting. I saw them for sale on like Depop, but I just was not that invested, especially in the bootleg boys story. Like, the coolest thing they came up with was a coffee table <laughs> in the shape of the ass pizza pumpkin, which was sick. So, oh gosh, I have so many things in my collection, which could be the rarest thing in my collection. And so as we talk about the last t-shirt, the last um, top in my collection, it's framed. It is so rare, it is framed. I bought it from the same people as this 2017 Windbreaker jacket. Shout out again to District 7 in Arcata, California. District 07. Um... And they also sold me this, which could very well be the rarest thing in my collection. I wore it once to take pictures and then never wore it again because this is one of the pieces that was part of Austin, one of Austin's biggest publicity stunts. The... Pablo T. When Austin had really long hair, it's about 2015, 2016, and Kanye West was huge. You know, Kanye has is on tour with his Life of Pablo album, and he has t-shirts that are all printed just like this that say Pablo, 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 Pablo. Right? As Pizza decides. Uh, probably on a whim, to get screens made in the same style as the official Kanye merch and start printing fake merch himself directly outside the stadium where Kanye was hosting the concert. And even though this made headlines, like, this got Ass Pizza into Rolling Stones magazine and got him an interview with Rolling Stone. And... The story goes that Kanye saw Austin directly bootlegging his own merch and just gave him the thumbs up. Like, it was a risk, and it paid off, and it paid off in a way that just made for a great story. And it finally got Austin, well, it got Austin mainstream attention very early and got the rest of his group, including... Father Steve, Warren Lotus, and Kerwin Frost, their initial attention from the Rolling Stones interview. So this could very well be uh, the rarest thing in my collection. Definitely the most iconic and deserved to be framed. However, this next thing, another piece of footwear, could also very well be the rarest thing in my collection. It's 2017. Austin's making his first collection in abandoned, what looked like an abandoned warehouse. <laughs> uh, eating and sleeping in the same studio, not in the same cold studio that he was making all the clothes in. And part of collection one he wanted to make shoes. And by golly, did he. These are Ass Pizza. Hand-branded, literally, Timberlands. Now, if you've seen the 2017 documentary of Making of Collection 1, you will know that Austin was wearing a gas mask 
while he took a custom branding iron and literally like just heated it up in a fire and just stamped the leather of the Timberlands to make them into ass pizza Timberlands. We also have a branding of the Signa on the um, tongue here of the boot. And then a branding of the same squibble that went on the back of the jeans. Ass Pizza 2017 Collection 1. Stop pretending. Yibby jabba jabba. Um, these are about a size 10, 10 and a half, which is also extremely rare to find a medium sized anything ass pizza 2017 but most importantly the timberlands and funnily enough these are the only things i ever bought off the subreddit check everywhere diligently check everywhere right left shoe again a branded tongue with the branding on outside inside and then Upside down this time is the Ass Pizza Hot Iron Branding, which even left an indent on this one at least. So, those could very well be the rarest thing in my collection. Uh, we're talking really early, and no one, who, no, everyone who has one of these does not want to sell them. They do not want to sell them. So, the fact that I found these on the subreddit of all places was just a story to be told. It was a lot of fun to find them, too, and talk with the guy. Turns out the guy who sold me those Timberlands not only owned two pairs of them, but uh, was part of the same bootleg boys group that made those rhinestone t-shirts. So it was a lot of fun talking to him. And his history. Is it still recording? Yeah, we're still recording. Good, good. Okay. We have finished the shirts. We have finished the closet. So. We still have a lot off screen here. And including some things that could also possibly consider the rarest thing in my collection. <laughs> but we'll start off with the smaller things here. We have a lot of knickknacks, uh, if you will, a lot of things that came free with orders that I also made from directly from Austin himself. But here we go. Starting off with Something that only the nerds got or paid for. The Welcome Magazine, issue number two, starring and interviewing Ass Pizza with exclusive behind the scenes photos and direct interviews with the man himself. I really enjoyed reading this. I enjoy rereading it. And I think. This, again, it gives the behind-the-scenes, just raw look that I absolutely just loved when it came to, um, when I first really got engaged with Ass Pizza, when I first really got my attention. There's a picture of the white pumpkin face 2018 denim that, again, I've only ever seen pictures of. And yeah, I might just reread this all over again collage of pictures along with stuff from his really early days yeah no it's so cool and something that just reminded me of why i originally wanted to genuinely follow ass pizza like i thought i was immune to influencers and then da da uh he appeared and absolutely just engaged me. Like, I wanted to know everything about this dude. I wanted to know everything he did. I wanted to know everything he made. I wanted to know everything he was involved with. And the size of the collection really shows that. But 
I think what changed really in my mentality is like, I just, I just like the dude, you know, I buy the stuff because it's associated with him and it's like his stuff, but that's just kind of what I, I just liked him. I just liked him. And now at this point, uh, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop buying new things since I just want to meet him. I just want to meet the guy. And so, yeah, um, I definitely have enough and more than enough and we'll keep going here. Probably an homage to the future of what is 730 footwear. We have one of the freebies that came with one of my orders. The Ass Pizza 730 Socks. Uh, these are a very hideous red and yellow. 730 on the back. Hardy Stars on the front. And this Metroid looking foot with grips. Why? Why does this exist? I mean, I got it for free. It came free with an order. But oh my goodness, there's nothing left to be said about that. That is gross. Happy New Year 2022 card from a different order. I don't know. I don't remember. Definitely the most common thing you got for free with an ass pizza order was pins. And people loved collecting these things. We got Blue on blue, purple on yellow, red on yellow, blue on red, repeats, and what is most sought after probably the American flag stars. I got these for free with 730 orders, with Halloween orders, with any order that I made directly from the man himself. I got pins. And I traded these pins for other items. I've done all sorts of things. But they really have no value to me. Pretty much trade them like currency. Except for one. I am a big fan of the Arizona Tea Company. And so I bought this Arizona Tea Snapback flat build hat and I noticed that there was one star pin that matched the colorway of my hat it's the same shade of turquoise and the pink of the flower blossoms was just too perfect and so I sought out this star and I bought it <laughs> this hat was really cheap the star pin was not. I paid, I don't, I don't want to talk about money. I don't want to talk about money. But yeah, I paid like chump change for the hat. And then I paid a solid bill, like a $20 bill for the pin itself. But that's also because I had to get that specific colorway in order to match my hat. Continuing on with hats. We have the 2020 Nothing Matters Pumpkin Hat. Again, going along with when I told myself I was going to be a pumpkin for Halloween with my ass pizza collection. This came with a sticker on the bill that would just constantly fall off. So it's now on a bit of wax paper. 2022 Nothing Matters F Live or 2020, excuse me. I originally thought I was going to put that on a hat clip and then clipped it to the bill, but I also just never wore this hat anywhere. On the side here, we have Nothing Matters with a Hardy Star. We have the same sky blue embroidery for 730. Black Squiggle embroidered. Black 2020 embroidered. And then the black uh, pumpkin jack-o'-lantern face on the front is also embroidered. It's a 360 embroidery. With randomized colorways, I was waiting and waiting to get a hat that had all blue since there was yellow and purple, black and orange, and like 
blue and orange and just weird colorways being sold on the market here. And then finally someone was listing an all blue one. And so I snatched it right off. Fits very well. Obviously used, you know, person I bought it from had used it. This was off of Grailed. But it's just a nice little dad cap. I don't know. Definitely a statement to go along with the 2018 tour hoodie with the black pumpkin face on white. And yeah, funnily enough, it was limited to 730 and I got 370. I got number 370. So I thought that was fun. All right, you saw the denim therapy jeans? Well, here's the denim therapy hat. Again, a completely randomized colorway and pattern since it was made out of the denim that got spray painted by his fans in a park. There are three Hardy stars, Carl's Jr. stars embroidered on the front of the hat in a horizontal line. I'm pretty sure this is meant to Reference the three Hardy stars that Austin has tattooed on his head, which was kind of freaky to me. Uh, up until then, I didn't think he had gone overboard with the tattoos. And yeah, I don't know about that one. <laughs> but yeah, embroidered Hardy stars on the front, embroidered 2022 year on the back, custom 2022 tag on the snap rim, and then flannel inside which really makes it incredibly comfortable to wear. This is a, probably the most comfortable baseball cap, dad cap, whatever that you could wear than that I owned. So I had a real good time with that. And I'm probably gonna keep it on for the rest of the video because I really liked the blue and green de uh, flannel that came on the inside here. Um, there is one picture of me in this hat with my family and I just, Instead of showing the front, it just showed the inside here. And I just thought it was such a great look. Um, moving on. A much less comfortable hat. <laughs> uh, this is again a 730 order. I ordered a lot on July 30th. Um, we have been talking a lot about the ski mask icon, the balaclava icon. And Austin really liked to make ski masks. Uh, these were ski masks that very much resembled what was on the back of the Warren Lotus shirt, went over the whole head, had a printed Jack Lantern pumpkin mouth and eyes cut out um, along with the pumpkin nose to create a Jack o' Lantern ski mask. And so this is a puff print ski mask hat. So originally this was a puff print ski mask, randomized colorway. I did not order this colorway of white on light purple, gray, I don't know. But this entire front bill has a puff printed jack-o'-lantern mouth on it and it's cracked like hell. Uh, the red circles here where the eye holes would have gone are embroidered, nose is puff print. The puff printed mouth extends all the way up to the body of the hat. And then on the back here, we have a custom 2022 tag again with the 2022 embroidered right above the snapback. I don't know if anybody else had this problem here, but right where the puff print extends up to the body of the hat, I don't know where they sourced their bills for this hat from, but it pinches so much in these corners here. Like it pinches right on your temples and it is not a good fit at all. It doesn't matter what size you put it on. If, it, if it's not just sitting right on top of your head, it's gonna squeeze in the most uncomfortable way. And it is just not good. It's just statement piece. You put this on a shelf. You do not put it on your head. Okay. We talked about the star pins. Now let's talk about this ass pizza pin. This is an unreleased 2017 collection one pin that was meant to go with the jeans and polos and what have you, but they just didn't release them. 
And so I managed to get this on Depop on the secondhand market since, you know, even though they weren't officially released with the collection, they kind of got just sold through handshake deals and in that way entered the market. So I don't think there's too much more to say about that. It's just printed gloss. It's just a manufactured pin. I don't think Austin had any hand in it at all, but it says on the back, proudly made in the USA. So I guess there's that. I paid too much for that, admittedly. Uh, last uh, build hat, uh, sort of a dad cap here. Could also be argued to be the rarest thing in my collection. This is incredibly rare. Um, there were a few listings on Grail that then sold. And then I managed to get this black one off of Discord. It is the original 2015 dad cap hat with the retro or I guess original squiggle logo embroidered on the front. This was the first clothing item Austin ever like dropped, if you will. Um, there were a limit of 220 and you had to order these online. This was the first online ordered item he made. And you can see down here, the handwritten tag. This was all the way back in 2015, probably predates the Pablo T for age. Got the handwritten squiggle there as pizza, number 147 out of 220. I look pretty good in this. Uh, it was just a nice little casual dad cap with what just looked like some any other car logo. I don't know. It was simple. It was inoffensive. It was nice. It's a very comfortable hat. It's a very comfortable hat. And it has the buckled back here for adjusting the size so you can adjust the size uh, smoothly and in any way you adjusted wise instead of um, incrementally with the snapback. Okay, with two more hats on the way, we have to talk about another thing that I bought from friends and in, uh, Instagram chat. We have the 2021 screen printed pumpkin beanie. This one is in red. There was also uh, black, white, orange, blue, and gr highlighter green, neon green. And this one is red. Um, Mostly bought this because it was just a friend in the chat and thought, yeah, I could use a pumpkin beanie too. Yeah, so again, not too much to say here. I don't really, now that I had, have had that Insomnia Clothing Company Meatwad beanie, I do not like these style of beanies anymore. The way that there's just more material left not on your head in order for it to really being more like here we go hold on you show don't tell like just to wear this over the ears in the same way here look at all this material that's left on the top of my head and i and the shape that results in this as stretched out at the top bottom here and then pinched and then the pinch right here it just it's not a good look i don't like it especially in red um was not too happy when i first saw this on my head and i don't think I, i'm gonna be sticking with this i'm gonna be sticking with this style of beanie this make of beanie it fits so much better to my head without any leftover material and keeps me Nice and warm with a very well build here. Of course, that didn't stop me. I believe I bought this one first before the pumpkin beanie. This is 2018 Ass Pizza Original Beanie. The first beanie he came out with, screen printed again. This one fits a bit tighter. It's Carhartt uh, gray beanie with highlighter yellow ink on top. I liked this one more, but again, the shape is not something I really like when it comes to these beanies. 
yeah, I don't know what else to say here. It went really well with some items that I own. When I wear just like gray pants and that Obey green button-up shirt, it looked pretty good. Um, I mostly bought this, again, to fill a part of my collection in the timeline, if you will. I was very much, I very much wanted to have an item from every year, including, you know, any hat that he made that year, t-shirt, pants, what have you. And so this is just a factor of that. It's definitely my favorite out of the two beanies, but I'm just not a fan of these beanies really anymore. I'm gonna put the denim therapy hat back on. Okay. One other thing I got for free a lot of times, stickers. We have the white 2022 stickers, another white 2022, the black variant of 2022, white, white, and then the Robin Jeans collab, which I did not even purchase from. I just got this sticker randomly in an order that I made and I was, I mean, it was free, so it's fine, but why is this, I don't know, I never liked Robin's jeans, and I think the um, rhinestones bedazzled Robin's jeans that Ass Pizza made with them, they're just not good looking. They're very, ugh, they're very gross. I don't like them at all, but to each their own, it's fine. I'm wearing a denim therapy hat, so I might as well show you the next denim therapy item, the last denim therapy item. Oh geez, how does this freaking work? Okay, y'all, let's be real. Let's be real. I bought this as a joke. I bought this for a meme. I bought this for laughs. I included it in my 7.30 order in order to make for the guys in the group chat. So here we go. I'll save the surprise in a second. As soon as I get the dang thing on. Holy cow, why did I do this to myself? I really do appreciate Austin experimenting with the form that is the denim therapy. But yeah, no, the only reason anybody bought this was for the joke, like, he also dropped women's jeans, like, women's cut jeans, that again, like, who shops ass pizza that has a girlfriend? Like, come on, no women are buying this. Because it is the Denim Therapy Bikini Top. So we have here a spray painted white denim with a screen printed Hardy star on top. It's not great. Um, I originally bought this with the excuse that it was going to be a wall decoration hanging up on the wall somewhere. I don't know. Yeah, no, uh, we got a lot of laughs out of it in the group chat and I'm sure they're gonna get a bunch of laughs out of me on video wearing it. Not gonna take my shirt off, pervert. But that is that for the denim therapy items. We're really getting down to it. Um, Yeah, we're getting to the last bit of items, really, the knickknacks. 2020 embroidered um, Letterman style patch. When I originally bought this, I thought I was going to make an ass pizza Letterman jacket. But then it just stayed as the one black patch. There was also a black embroidery on white style patch. 
Um, but that just never happened. Um, one thing that really just is a literal knickknack, like you just kind of bought it to own it, Ass Pizza Salt Shakers. We have handmade fire blown kiln um, salt and pepper shakers. <laughs> Colorways were again randomized. I got red and purple from my online order when these dropped online. First sold in person at the Soho Art Show, I believe, and then dropped online. So yeah, those are a lot of fun. Um, I think I really got caught up in the wave of just buying things, getting hyped for more things, talking to the community about more things, showing off my collection to the community. And so it resulted in me buying salt and pepper shakers that I'll never use since they're entirely meant for decoration. I'm not even going to take them out of the plastic box, like have them displayed outside the plastic box. But I mean, they got a nice, ooh, colored glaze to them. They're very smooth, like. Plastic box is kind of dusty. This is the first time they've been out of the box. I think the three holes is supposed to be pepper and the two holes is supposed to be salt, which would make sense to me. Purple is a darker color. Pur uh, pepper is a darker kernel and then purple pepper, yeah. Uh, those have just remained on my shelf as a little decoration. Go figure. Um, this is on YouTube, but it's also on Blu-ray. This is the making of Collection One, the 2017 documentary, filming Austin in his warehouse studio, printing, embroidering, and crafting all of the items for 2017 Collection One while randomly spray painting the walls. It's an interesting watch the first time around, but the entire thing is on YouTube now. So this was, the only reason I own this is because I am, I associated the amount of items that I own from this artist with my uh, level of fan to them. So I wasn't a real fan unless I owned the Collection One Blu-ray. Um, only 200 of these were made or were burned on the disc. And each one came, if you slipped out the DVD cover, came with exclusive behind the scenes photos from the making of Collection One. And I mean, there's just Father Steve's street art. There's just a view of, I don't know, somewhere. And I think the best one is really just a picture of Austin getting one of his chest tattoos back when he had long hair. Yeah. Austin had long hair for the Rolling Stones interview, 2015, 2016. Um, if you remember Vine, when there was that, yes, yes, meme uh, with the guy in the Gucci headband, that was ass pizza. And that was back when he had really long hair, like just really long brunette hair that is now almost completely shaved down to the scalp, really. Uh, I think he went bald for one drop and then uh, it didn't really stick with his fans and it didn't really stick with him. But this is the entire making of Collection 1 on Blu-ray with bonus features. There are behind the scenes like, you can look at uh, the archive of the collection, you can look at uh, past videos that they did of the collection and yeah and then there's just behind the scenes pictures in the photo book that came with the DVD but that came that was the same with every copy whereas these ones were special to my copy of 200 so I really enjoyed watching this on my TV you can, again, just watch it on YouTube now. But 
That's originally how I first found Ass Pizza. The first 40 minutes of this Blu-ray was on YouTube, and I just found it. I don't know, it recommended it to me for some reason. Not even on Ass Pizza's own YouTube channel, just like on some randos. And I watched the first 40 minutes of this Blu-ray on YouTube, and I just got soaked in to a person that was genuinely starting from nothing had a fire going in a grocery cart in the backyard of this abandoned warehouse that he had coated in graffiti and spray paint. Um, the fire in the grocery cart was heating up an iron brand that he would then stamp into Timberland boots. And I was like, what is going on? That is cool. And it just went from there. I watched every vlog that Austin made. And I studied and studied until I finally bought that 730 Studio shirt. And here we are with this huge collection. I mentioned when we talked about, let's make sure this is still recording. I was talking about a bundle when I was trying to explain why I owned two um, 20, 2019 nothing matters pumpkin teas the yellow one came in a bundle with a few items one of them being this the ass pizza hearty star fridge magnet this i've only ever seen pictures of and the only one i've ever seen in person is the one i'm holding right now could be the rarest thing in my collection. Um, yeah, this came along with the bundle. It's just a standard fridge magnet with the Ass Pizza Star, or the Hardee's Ass Pizza Star. It just looks like a Hardee's Star, but hey, it came with as a freebie in the in the Ass Pizza 2019 shirts. And it also came with this item. Which could, which has a very good argument of being the actual rarest item in my collection. I would argue it's the rarest item in my collection. And it is the whole reason I bought that bundle to begin with. I don't care about the fridge magnet. Uh, the yellow text pumpkin shirt was just a bonus. I bought it for this. This is a $20 ass pizza pop-up store credit bill um you can see 20s and 50 ver dollar versions of this featured uh in the 2020 no jumper interview that toured ass pizza studio and it's just very cool <laughs> it's very cool so like I said before, when I was showing the Future Fantasy Delight currency shirt, I'm a finance and economics major. And so when I learned that Austin printed money and was backing it with the value of his collectible merchandise, I was very interested. Also, he designed this entire thing on top of the image of a $2 bill. Like, come on, it's so quirky. It's so fun. And yeah, no, this was something that I was looking for throughout the entire time that I've been collecting. From day one, I was looking. From the day I learned these existed, I was looking for one. And I wanted one to frame. And I got one along with that fridge magnet and that 2019 pumpkin tea. But it was for this little guy. Definitely, arguably... The rarest thing in my collection since not only were these only came with online orders, so they were already in a limited supply. And then people could redeem these at stores. So not only were there a, a limited amount of these, they came out one time and people were then taking them out of the market by redeeming them for merch at Austin's pop-ups. So you have a whole trifecta of artificial scarcity on these things. And in all sincerity, it's worth more than $20 now. It technically has a backed value of $20.
you present this at a pop-up and Austin will give you $20 off. Like, go figure. That's neat. That's a lot of fun. I was considering uploading a scan of this to the archive and only to realize that that would then just result in a lot of fakes getting printed and Austin getting bankrupt. But, um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's super cool. I'm very happy that I, when I first got this, it was the listing that had this bill on it had been on live on ground for 29 minutes. I specifically remembered that. Because I was just trying to think of the look on the guy's face when he was just like, all right, going to go list this on grail. And oh, look, it already sold. It sold instantly because I was there checking every day, every hour practically for these items. And then, of course, the smallest thing, the smallest thing became the rarest cherry on top for my collection. We have one more item. We have one more item. And I have kind of hinted at it throughout this entire video. But the whole reason I'm filming my collection now is um, I'm opting out. I'm done. I'm going to stop collecting. And this is kind of to announce that. I know I've been kind of the high baller. Uh, big spender of the community when it came to, or at least the biggest public spender. Like, <laughs> y'all know how many items I own. Yeah, it's entirely crazy, but it's great. Um, yeah. Um, so we have one item left and it's going to be the one item I keep. I'm selling everything else. This is also to announce that my entire collection is for sale. The Timberlands have already been sold. Uh, I'm going to ship them out as soon as this video is uploaded. And yeah, don't try to sell me in Discord. Don't try to sell me anything new. When I go to meet Austin in his 50 States tour, that's all I'm going to be there for. I'm just going to meet him. I'm going to say how much I appreciate him, how much I appreciate his story um, that really inspired me back in 2017 when I was in college and a freshman. And it was just really cathartic to see such a strange person succeed in their strange way. And I'm very strange myself on the reverse side of this wall is an autism awareness ribbon um, because I am autistic and I don't know I just I've m gravitated towards Austin Babbitt as a person who has not only a magnetic strongman personality but um, did exactly what he wanted to do with his life down to the T he did exactly what he wanted to do with his life. No peer pressure, dropped out of high school, didn't, just did exactly what he wanted to do. And I was, made big swings with the bootleg Pablo merch and uh, starting 730 footwear, 730 studios and 730 printing and they've all been home runs. I think every person who's following Ass Pizza is like me and rooting for him. Um, and I'm very happy to see not only Austin succeeding, but enjoying his success. He's a weird person who succeeded in doing his weird thing. And it was exactly resonated exactly with what people wanted large amount of people want his stuff and I want it. it's great I enjoy all of it um and it's allowed me to appreciate art more I bought 
I wouldn't have bought this wall art if it weren't for my appreciation for Ass Pizza's work. Uh, I wouldn't have bought, I wouldn't have dressed better. I, I, I dressed myself, but <laughs> wasn't really color coded. Uh, but then when I really got an investment into the clothing and wore clothing that made me feel confident and wore clothing that I liked the look of and that I liked seeing myself in the mirror in, I genuinely started to care. And even when I wasn't wearing ass pizza, I stayed color coordinated. My shoes matched my belt, matched my watch, matched my hat, matched my glasses, um, matched my sunglasses. And I just cared more. I just cared more when I owned I, uh, ass pizza. And it taught me to just dress better and care about how I dressed. And then watching him as an example, um, I don't have any other words other than inspiring. Um, it's not just passion. It's in a, an eccentric passion. And it's not just someone who's uh, accepted for their weird passions as an eccentric because they're rich. They became Austin succeeded because he was an eccentric. And he is still today. He is the premier name as an individual artist in New York streetwear. The entire East Coast is just dominated by ass pizza. If it's not Supreme or some other corporation, it's ass pizza. And he's helped people get their starts. Kentucky boy Tyler got his start working with ass pizza in his workshop. You can see that in the 2018, 2019 uh, no jumper interview. <laughs> Where they were making, oh my gosh, my throat finally went. <clears> throat> oh, <coughs> definitely gonna have to cut that out. Now, I need water. I need water. Oh my gosh. A few hours later. Oh no. So, I'm very happy to be a part of this community, <clears throat> and I'm very happy to have met all of you. I'm very happy to know Ass Pizza, and I'm very happy to know that a person like that even exists. I don't know what else to say. I'm going to continue digitally following Ass Pizza. If he makes a video, I'll watch the shit out of the video. Every Instagram post, every Twitter post, every YouTube video. I'll, I, I was glued to the three day long stream, live stream. That was awesome. Love getting the behind the scenes inside scoop. And that was exactly what got me in the first place. The 2017 Blu-ray was behind the scenes. And now we have a three-day live stream of 7.30 printing behind the scenes. It was just so cool. It was originally so cool to just see a pioneer working on his own to make something new out of nothing. Made from nothing. Which was the name of Collection 2. Yeah, to now having employees, people on the bankroll, and being able to afford employees, and the giant printing machines, and the huge deliveries of entire delivery trucks being filled with nothing but packages from 730 printing for ass pizza orders. It's just a, it's a wild ride if you take it all in at once. Uh, following him throughout the past four, five, six years, it's, it's, all, it's been great. I've loved all of it. I've loved watching him do his thing and only his thing. 
which is why the one item I'm going to keep after selling the rest of this is an autographed dollar bill. I talked about the proxy for my New York, the Soho New York show, where I got the brown shirt with the camouflage star and the white sweatpants shorts. Austin was offering my proxy to sign the sweatpants shorts. I thought that would wash out immediately. So I told him to get a signed dollar instead. And so this is an autographed dollar from the man himself. It was in my picture frame along with the 20. And it's going to be the one item I keep. I mean, anyway, people really prefer the one of the stuff that he signs with spray paint anyway. But yeah. Uh, if it hasn't, if it's been more than six months since I upload this video, my collection's probably gone. But if it's like the first month, you can DM me on Instagram or Discord, uh, wherever you find me. Comment on this video. Let me know what you want. And thank you for letting me be a part of your community. I appreciate all of you. Y'all enjoy yourselves. Thank you.